The project is called Exurban Archipelago, and the whole name came up, actually, when I started spending a lot of time on Google Earth just scanning areas that I had been driving around for a long time, some cases that I'd never driven around at all, uh, specifically areas that uh, probably would be called Exurbia, and these would be areas outside outside of the uh, suburbs uh, that are really no longer something you would call countryside anymore, but um, they're not suburbs either, they're something else. And these were the areas that just fascinated me. So I started looking at them from uh, satellite photography. And I started noticing and being fascinated by these complexes of distribution centers. Sometimes these are called fulfillment centers, sometimes they're referred to as logistics centers, but basically, they all look kind of the same. They're the very large, very large, um, horizontal buildings. Most of them have been plopped down in the last few years. A few of them are older. Um, and they tend to be built near each other, almost always near uh, major expressways, often near major expressway intersections. And as I started looking at them on Google, um, Earth, it just seemed like a, an archipelago. The word archipelago came to me. I thought, of course, the islands that you think of, particularly wherever, certainly the South Pacific. And the way they were distributed, no pun intended, it was just this almost random distribution of these large, massive forms like islands across this green former countryside everywhere. And thus, the name archipelago came on. So the two words came together. And from that point on, I've been working this project. It started initially as a web-based project, quite literally a, a, a page I designed for my own website. Um, and I was faced with kind of a problem of how to make sense of all this to anybody else. So the idea of the distribution center is basically that it's an abstracted form. And the artist reuses that form and that shape in paintings, in sculpture, in an interactive board game that he's allowing visitors to actually play when they come to his, his show. So it's really interesting to see how the artist has interpreted this really nondescript shape as a kind of abstract, formal language in his artwork. And so Xerbia is based on, the, for the most part, on a node and network system. For the most part, it would be places where two major roads or expressways cross. They become the places where development occurs. That's typically where a major shopping mall will be built. And around that will be corporate centers nearby. They'll be residential. And it's fine. It's just another place where people are going to, make, to move. And it makes sense because they're close to whatever's going to be happening. But my point is, is spatially speaking, and I'm fascinated with people's sense of space, I just find it's really fascinating. I find often it's a very disorienting place, in a fun way sometimes, but still, often it's harder to figure out where you're going. Um, but it's really the whole logic, the spatial logic of, of a network rather than a center is what defines, in my mind, what Exerbia is. Having an interactive element in the exhibition really dovetails with the DCCA's mission to create more participatory opportunities for the visitor, and it also reflects a national, if not international, desire to allow the visitor to complete the artwork through their participation. So by allowing visitors the chance to come in and actually play a game that the artist has developed, and have that tie into his abstract visual language is a really, I think, generous and exciting avenue for not only, not only adults, but children, potentially, to be able to understand where his vocabulary, his visual vocabulary, comes from. It's not even just a didactic or educational way of, of approaching his art. It's, also a, a visual way and a creative way as you, you know, begin to see more and more artists using the medium of games, of, of playing, um, and looking at the social a aspect of gaming as well. So I think that within the context of, of Stephen's work, 
you see the artist experimenting with a lot of different media and very much experimenting with his painting practice. It's not just a studio-based practice. It is really activating the gallery space and bringing people in through many different senses, through the visual, through the tactile and kinetic, and then you know, also having this immersive mural allows for the visitor to appreciate the exhibition on multiple levels.